Welcome tonight from White City! We come to you on this occasion not from the ubiquitous stadium here, but from the nearby castle where in just a matter of seconds, a journey for the ages helps to play out. We have a challenger who has invited all the trainers that make this castle their occasional retreat, including all the gym leaders of the Johto region, back here at once in an attempt to take them all down, all 29 in a row. Of course, he'll start from the bottom and work his way up. Currently getting into position. Picking out the six Pokémon for the first task. And there it is! Clock has started and now he's running into position for the first battle against Matt and Violet Jim. Can't really tell how much of a pushover or how difficult it'll be. But it's battle one. Probably positioned that way for a reason. Of course, we're not actually in Violet City, but... Each of the gym leaders designed a replica gym here to their own liking, even if it didn't match up. Because Violet Gym in the real one actually has a ceiling unlike this place. But Faulkner likes it better without the ceiling, so he commissioned his replica to be built without one. Now Knock Owl takes a hit from Lyco Thunderbolt. Not quite 300. Knock Owl survives confusion, which hits the end nowhere near 300, just 30. This Ryko gave it a nickname of Right Pun. Make it that as you wish. You see trainers like Matt? Do the Pokemon nicknames ending in Ash? Well, our challenger decided to give them nicknames ending in Poon. And another Thunderbolt takes Knocked Owl down, and we're 1 of 87, hopefully, from victory. Now we're near the end, of course, but here comes Murkrow. Murkrow gets off a quick attack, thinking that's all it can do, at least. Guarantee itself one hit, another 30. So not the most powerful offense coming out of Matt. Another Thunderbolt. And it gets an instant KO! So at the two minute mark, we have two Pokémon down. And up third is far-fetched. Probably similar situation to Merkur, it might get off a quick attack, but in any case, it doesn't look to stand up to not even a quick attack. Here comes the Thunderbolt, should be an easy instant KO. And that's Battle 1 done with. Number 1 on the way to whatever this victory may be, 29. Needed, so there's 28 more to go. If we can get 28 just like that, he's in good shape. Probably won't be as easy as this one, but... I'm sure we can hope for it. Now, even this fairly short battle took close to three minutes. Now, given the... Given the mandatory cleanup time, you have to send in the cleanup crew between battles. Even a perfect battle, you can't get much below two minutes by official law. Twenty-nine battles at two minutes. Combine that with the time it takes to actually run all the way up the castle, we're gonna be here at least an hour. I don't know how much longer than that, but that's a lower bound for you. And now with Faulkner, it's Raikou versus Zapdos. Close to a mirror match with a slight imbalance. Raikou definite edge here. Using Thunderbolt, that'll hit for times one. Unlike Zapdos, which would hit for times half if it tried that. I'll need three hits to take down Zapdos. Fires off a Mud Slap. Not very strong, but at least it gets the statistical times two, and it kicks some dirt in Raikou's face, so that you can't see as well. Another Thunderbolt, one in four chance with that dirt in the face. It gets through that chance, and takes Zapdos down to the red. Another Mud Slap. So with two Mud Slaps, essentially three since the first one was critical, 
Zapdos has managed to do only 107, Raikou needing two Thunderbolts to do 309, Raikou's coming back out! Presumably to recover from that dirt in the face. Sending in Suicune! Hm. Not exactly the most conventional choice to take on a Zapdos with. It gets some more dirt in the face. And only 12 damage from that, whoa. I guess if Suicune had Mirror Coat, we'll try and play right into Zapdos, but right now Zapdos on red, that's not even necessary, and that's Suicune. Yes, it's coming back out. In any case, Mirror Coat would have to hit through that dirt in the face from Mud Slap. So now Raikou back out. Suicune only out for one turn. And get Zapdos to use Thunderbolt for that. That's an excellent way to distract the Zapdos. Get it to use something other than Mud Slap so that Raikou doesn't get dirt in the face as soon as it comes out. Instead, it just plays with a minus zero accuracy. And the third Thunderbolt will finish Zapdos off. Cost Raikou half its health, and a bit more than that, but... Another effective way of dispatching the bird. Second up from Faulkner is Dodrio. And one more Thunderbolt. Is it an instant KO? Yes, it is! And Skarmory voted most recognizable Pokemon Cry in Johto, I don't, I don't know how many times, but at least once. Even now, visible travelers down Route 44 tell of tales of sounds they can only describe as Skarmory. They already know what it sounds like. And Raikou takes it down with one Thunderbolt, another instant kill. So just nine Thunderbolts is all it takes to dispatch the entire Violet Gym. Good start so far. First badge, official time 636 at the split. Now running on his way to Azalea. Very nice using the organizer. He's got on his belt. Keep the same Pokemon so he doesn't have doesn't have to dig through big piles for anywhere near as long. Sticking with the same six. Given that organizer probably gonna stay with the same six throughout the whole event. And now a change of plans. Tyranitar starting. Tyranaporn as they call it. And against the Sun Floor, named Flow Ray, not to be confused with Blue Ray. One a waste of time in optical disc form, the other a waste of time in Pokemon form, so I guess they're not that different after all. I ran a toe with an ice beam. Hmm. It's for more than half. It's for 196. Now Sun Floor with a Giga Drain. That can hit hard. It's for a third of Tyranitar's health. That'll give Sun Floor some back as well. 180, I don't think that's enough. It took 196. Second Ice Beam should put Sun Floor down. No, it survives on 6! Now going for Razor Leaf instead of Giga Drain, huh? It's a critical out of that. Taking Tyranitar all the way down to the red doesn't get any health back. Even a critical Giga Drain I don't think gives Sun Floor enough health back to survive this third Ice Beam. Tyranitar gets one down, but not without a heavy cost over 90%, almost 90% of its health. Now B drill. Tyranitar in a very precarious position, switching out. Doesn't want to risk anything that can take out 42 HP. No matter what it might be able to do to Beedrill. It's not taking much chance. Here comes Dodrio. Beedrill with a Twin Needle. Hmm. 
gets a poison, doesn't even get 42 on Dodrio, certainly wouldn't have done so on Tyranitar. Now Dodrio with the Drill Tech. And that is an instant KO! The Chaz down to his last. Remember since the Drio was able to get the instant KO. Speed of battle matches up and the Drio doesn't yet suffer from poison. Now facing down a Sand Shrew. And Drill Tech takes over half off Sand Shrew. Now finally suffering from some poison, Iron Tail hits for weak. Gets a defense down, I don't think that's gonna matter. Dodrio can put it away with one more drill pack. Ten minutes in, and just about to come to the conclusion of Battle 3. That puts it on pace for something like a hundred minutes. That's an hour forty, not just one hour. So we could be here a while. Now moving into position for the Azalea Gym, Min and Lin, the twins who supposedly fight as one. They don't yet have to permits to life to fight as two, and neither is that supported anywhere in White City. And Tyranitar again, expecting more easy pickings from this gym. Going up against the Ponyta. Seem to be seeing a lot of weaklings in this gym. After that sun floor, nothing really did it much of anything. The Ponyta with an iron tail and whips! Here's ancient power, that'll hit a lot harder than zero. And that's an instant KO. Our challenger today told a roving reporter, normally here's a, here's a Skarmory and a Blissey around, rejected them from the team for this adventure just because he doesn't think they'll be able to win fast enough. Trying to, apparently having some sense of speed to go through this, wants to do it fast rather than the slow battles that Skarmory and Blissey tend to prefer. And here's Snubble with a charm after losing half its health from an ain't help from an earthquake. Yeah. Oh, it was an ancient power. Huh. There's Crunch. Crunch doesn't really care about charm because it doesn't really use physical. And if I can fight with specials just as well and not suffer the 50% cut. Now Pineco. Tyranico would definitely like to hit with ancient power except that charm basically eliminates the type edge, going for a crunch. And takes over 200, not quite a KO. A Pineco with Reflect, another barrier against physicals, not specials. As an announcer, I'm probably not supposed to say stuff like, YOU'RE DOING IT WRONG, BUT YOU ARE! <laughs> a Tyranitar with second crunch. Puts this away and gets a no damage clear in this battle. Now all that's left in Azalea Gym is Bugsy. Will we be seeing as weak picks from things we did from the last two in the gym? Certainly, options to choose from seem a lot more palatable. And Tyranitar leads off for the third time in these three battles at Azalea 
replica gem. And it will face off against Pseudo Woodo. Tar Earthquake. Pseudo Woodo also capable of Earthquake. It does survive. And the yellow low kick! That'll do some damage. Now more recent years have brought developments of a new improved method of getting in a low kick. Hit that on Tyranitar, it falls flat on its face and suffers huge damage. Pseudo Woodo apparently not trained in that. Really not with a body stature to perform such an effective kick either, and now Tyranitar puts it away. Eradicate up second. Super Fang for 136. Tyranitar, Ancient Power. It's a critical... ONE! Radicate survives on one after the first critical hit for the Challenger All Event. And walked right into that one! Radicate Reversal Battle clearly take down Tyranitar. We will not be seeing 29 sweeps here. And to think that could have been avoided if the critical hit had been on Earthquake rather than Ancient Power. Ryko coming in probably to clean house. Hopefully it doesn't let Radicate hit a reversal. I think Ryko can actually take a reversal from full, but not full on by very much. Doesn't need to, it just takes down Thunderbolt for one damage on Radicate. Scyther! The one Pokemon that gains absolutely no total stat points when it evolves. Certainly leaving much to be desired with its type, much improved type upon evolution in Ryko with Thunderbolt. For the instant KO, and that is two gyms down. Looks like just over 10 minutes to get the badge from Azalea, and then it's on to Goldenrod. Got the Zephyr badge at 636, now the High badge 1659. Against Lois, we see Machamp leading. Machamp Poon, that name has quite a nice ring to it, actually. Against Corsola. Cross Chop. That'll hit some damage if it hits. It does Focus Band, oh Corsola! Seems to be having a knack for leaving stuff on one. Corsola with a Psychic. And gets 104 from it. So even though it says super effective, probably not very effective. After all. Champ with Earthquake for one as long as it doesn't hit the Focus Band again, it doesn't. Now jump off. On paper has an apparent type edge that it doesn't really plan to do much with. Going with a confusion. Type edge of a different kind and only gets 50. So my champ seems to be pummeled with so-called super effective hits, but they aren't really doing much to it. Now here's a rock slide, comes short of the instant.
Jump up switching out. No, it's not! That's a solar beam charge! Camera seems to be switching to the... Switch out angle automatically after jump up just stayed still for a while. It turns out it was just focusing its... Energy from the sun through the windows here. But that gave him a champ ch opportunity it needed to take out. Jump up with the second rock slide and not suffer anything more. Now, Furret. Or as Lois calls it, Furret. What? Slap? What? I can say... From my experience, that's the first time I've seen any Pokémon use Slam in years! Seems to be a huge waste of time, didn't even hit for anything. Now I'm a champ with a Cross Chop that connects for the instant KO. Six battles down, over 20 minutes. That pace seems to suggest just under a hundred minutes. But so far we've seen the so-called easy opponents. And they get much harder as things go on. But either doesn't seem to have a very compelling case for changing that. Not my champ this time, back to Raikou, for the lead, against Clefable. Thunderbolt, what'll that do? That'll need three hits, that one needs two more, now Clefable going for Minimize. Second Thunderbolt and a 25% chance of missing, doesn't. Fable in the red, going for more minimizes. Another Thunderbolt, this one, 40% chance. And it does miss. Third minimize, that'll make it 50. Fable not really putting up any offense at all, just trying to stall down the clock, apparently. To slow down Raikou as much as it can, force it to earn his victory and moving on further. Seems to stand against the challenger's goal of trying to get through this as fast as it can. Now four minimizes up. 57% to miss. And this Thunderbolt hits. Fable down. Up next, Azumero. Quite a lot of health, I'd say. Can it take all that 374 to clear with a Thunderbolt? No! Leaves it in the red, Azumero with a Whirlpool. Which hits for very minor, 11. And it'll hit for some every turn as long as Azumaro stays out, which it apparently won't be for long. Raikou can't switch at all either. Not that it would want to. It's got Azumaro on the ropes, now to put it away. Done. One more left from Rita. Deli Bird! Like a sense is an easy instant KO here. Thunderbolt for blood, or maybe not actual blood, proverbial blood, more like whatever Deli Bird's holding in that bag. Which, I'm not sure Michael would even be able to use it, but it certainly gets what it was going for, that's... Over half of Raikou's KOs, even at this point, have been instant.
100% to 0% in one shot. Now it's on to Whitney, who has a team that actually looks somewhat strong for once. Leading off for the challenger, it is... My champ again! Going for something strong against the advertised type, I guess. And runs into Mr. Mime, which is just the opposite. Camp is coming out. When Tyranitar comes in, hit the potential psychic miss completely. Mr. Mime not psychicing, double team instead. I'll put its evasion up just like Clefable did last battle. I'm going first getting up two double teams before Tyranitar gets a chance to do anything. And Crunch! Miss! Third double team. Second crunch, and this one's a hit. It gets a special defense drop, not that it really needs it at this point. Mr. Mime is down to another attack anyway. Quick Claw works, Ancient Power? No! Now Mime putting up a fourth double team. Saw Clefable last for four. Mom did the same. Will it even get a chance for five? Here comes Ancient Power! It's a hit! Mr. Mom down! A gold duck. Hit Tyranitar. Uh, cross Chop! That's unexpected. But it hits Tyranitar for over half. Trying for an Ancient Power? Missed into a Bright Powder. Score one for Gold Duck so far. Tyranitar not wanting to stay out here any longer. And it's Raiko! Using Surf, presumably of a cross chop for consistency. Expecting to hit Tyranitar, but hitting Raiko instead, getting 101. Now Thunderbolt. Got have enough to take down Gold Duck 327. No it doesn't! So Gold Duck gets off a second Surf. Remember, it does have that Bright Powder, small chance of it even being able to get off a third surf. That's with Raikou close to the red. Thunderbolt hits! Now Whitney down to one more. And Mill Tank. Like a sting in might as well. Thunderbolt. Does it get? Over half. Like a one away if it survives this earthquake. It does. 39 HP left. Thunderbolt for the badge! Oh! 
Oh, Mill Tanks! Took it! Survives on nine! Damage variants worked in Mill Tanks' favor here, and it takes an earthquake to put down Raikou! Which will be sent off to our medical team immediately for a chance to get healed up for the next battle as soon as possible. Now my champ is needing to close out Mill Tank with a nine. Mill Tank preempting it with a milk drink, that'll put itself right back up into half. Earthquake! Now suddenly needing to clear 195! She doesn't! So Mill Tank actually net gaining 81 health on that turn. Can't probably have to go back to Cross Chop now. Milk Drink, getting back more health. Vital Throw! Huh. At least it's gonna hit at least. No chance of missing, but Mill Tank still survives. So using Earth did deal more than half. If it had used Vital Throw opposite the first Milk Drink, that'd save at least a couple turns here. Now having to use Vital Throw number two. That's a critical, it'll put Miltank down! So that... Miltank... Extending this battle by a couple turns. Now we're over 30 minutes. Goldenrod's been taking a lot longer than the previous two. In fact, this last battle... Coming... Taking very near 7 minutes. See there? Losing pace. Could fall well below a hundred minute pace. And we go to the first battle of Ekrotik. It'll be Tyranitar versus Ghastly, which is quite the mismatch. Ghastly does get one chance to strike Nightshade, that's for a hundred. And Crunch! Instant KO! Ghastly not putting up much resistance to that at all. Now Weepin' Bell. Should be able to hit for something stronger if it can actually take hits. Ice Beam. Wise Choice actually gets times two, unlike Earthquake, only times one. But uh, just short of taking down Weeping Bell, it gets a chance to put off a Razor Leaf. A Tyranitar right on the edge of half. Ancient Power! Third this time we have Knock Owl. In the first the very first opponent of this event showed quite a knack for taking hits, at least in the hands of Matt. That was against Riker, now it's against Tyranitar. Ancient Power. Again into the red. The two straight 90% that failed to be instant KOs. Knocked out going for a takedown, that won't do much, and even if it did, kills itself with KOs itself with recoil damage first. And second ancient power to put this one away.
So leading off for the challenger against Ty Raiko now. And Ty will start with Jinx. There's Crunch. It's Crunch time and Jinx takes one. More than half damage. I mean, look. Obviously, Jinx well known for following that up with Parish Song. Probably close to as well known for not being able to take hits. So Raiko could probably put this down with one more Crunch. It does. So Jinx not getting a chance to Parish Song. Here's Thunderbolt. Another hit well into the yellow this time. But Grimer with a mean look. Probably not going to be anywhere near as useful in the hands of Grimer. Especially not when it's going to get KO'd by one more hit. Grimer drops. It's Gold Bat! I could take that down from 311. Thunderbolt! Hit! And instant KO! Raiko walking away with a no damage clear in this battle! And one away from the Fog Badge! Now, time for Morty, it will be Tyranitar versus Segutor. These two look like they can exchange hard-hitting blows against each other. Tyranitar does go first, gets in a crunch. Don't think even it can hit 357. Does get a special D-drop that doesn't really matter. Giga Drain, Exeggutor is going to get some of that health back. Not nearly enough to be able to survive another crunch, presumably. Not even enough to get back to half. And down it goes! Morty coming up next with a Grand Bowl. Ancient Power. It's for something. Not really very much considering what this is. Oh, but there's the boost! That boost in the hands of Tyranitar usually means instant win. Indeed, we'd be surprised not to see Tyranitar walk away with a sweep here on its own. Ramble hitting only for under 30 with a sludge bomb. Now Earthquake. Falls short of the KO. But if all Ramble's gonna do is sludge bomb, Tyranitar's certainly not in any danger. Second Earthquake, that'll be easy. Mm. Mm. 
last for Morty into the Tyranitar with a boost, it will be Gengar. Tyranitar now fast enough to try and outrun Gengar, it does! And gets in a crunch. Instant KO! So the boost gets a chance to pay off. Tyranitar sweeping. That's its third solo sweep of this event. And this gym obviously much faster than the last one. Looking to be just under 10 minutes. He'll take us past 40 overall though. So 11 opponents cleared. Rio will lead against Nick. And will face off against Dragonair. Possible advantage Dragonair if it knows what it's doing and is prepared to do it. It's not set up that way. Can't really tell. Here's Drill Peck from the Drio. <laughs> Waiting for under half. Dragonair. Horn Drill! No! Second drill pack. Into the red. Another horn drill. No! So this Dragonair out somehow not a Dragonite. Don't know why it hasn't evolved. It will not get a chance at this level. Use that up. Here's the third drill pack. Taking it down. An interesting stat about these Pokemon that haven't attained their final evolution yet. That so far in this event, they've taken more than 10 times as much damage as they've dished out. So that's an obvious underperformance they could have at least somewhat fixed. Now it's Kingler. A drill with a drill peck against it. Hitting for not close to as much. I would possibly need four hits. Guillotine! No! And drill pack. Can we're still over a hundred in health. Guillotine? No! Nick taking stabs essentially in the dark, hitting not much. Third drill pack. Should fall a bit short from what we've seen. And it does, Kingler on two. Now it's rest. About as good a rest as you can get from Kingler. Drill Peck into the sleeping Kingler. Similar performance. Oh, Sleep Talk! It's guillotining in its sleep! No! Oh, for five now! And Adria still Drill Pecking away. Leap Talk Rest! So it'll get that health right back up. Now Dodrio deciding it's had enough of this. Drill Peck is way too slow at taking down Kingler. So it'll be Gengar, which is as a side effect even immune to Guillotine. Sleep Talk Crab Hammer, it's not immune to that! And it does hit critical hit. Not quite half of Gengar. Gengar Thunderbolt. It gets its own critical hit. That could be an instant KO. It is! That name, Geng Puan. Five consecutive consonants. Very difficult to pronounce at first glance. But 
for some reason, the challenger decided to go with that name. Here comes Arbok as we come up to 45 minutes in. Psychic. Is that enough to drop Arbok? No. Going with a rock slide. Had, didn't hit with horn drill, didn't hit with gill, he now doesn't even hit with rock slot. Nick probably needs to work on his Pokemon's aim. Gengar finishes it off, and... Now this battle is a thing of the past. Only Chuck remains here in Cyanwood Gym. Leading off Raikou and Hitmonchan. No real decisive edge either way. Here comes Thunderbolt. Obviously Raikou's go-to attack. And hits less than half on Hitmonchan. Responding with Dynamic Punch hits critical into the yellow. And a confusion that runs right into the Miracle Berry. So that much is dealt with. But now 123. I don't think Raikou just can really take another dynamic punch. Going with Thunderbolt. That won't be enough. Hitman Chin still on 20. Going with a dynamic punch. If it hits, it's done. But it doesn't hit. Ryko stays in. Hitman Chin giving off a mock punch. Probably a parting gift. Knows it can't take a third Thunderbolt. Does take Ryko into the red first. And it drops! So a very heavy cost. Ryko Tyranitar, obviously, the clear two workhorses here in this team, even though they're not really horses. The counter for three-fourths of the kills KO so far on the event for the challenger. And Ryko with a rest. It's not really clear what Raikou is supposed to be. Some call it a dog, some call it a cat. Some even go so far as to call it a gerbil for some reason. Whatever it is, it's good. Here it is using rest with the Miracle Berry already gone from that dynamic punch. That's just going to cost some turns. It probably thinks it can take down Ampharos. Now a dynamic punch from it. Nowhere near as hard as from Hitmonchan, of course. But it'll back up confusion. Now Reko waking up. And hits itself. So nice timing from Ampharos right there. Reko down 37 more. Thunderbolt Ampharos. Hits for a bit of damage. Ryko already down into the yellow, still hasn't had a chance to hit. After that rest, now it does with the crunch for 81. That'll take a very long, maybe not now, not as long now with that special defense drop. Another Thunderbolt. Still confused, and it's hitting itself a second time. Thunderbolt! Right go down to six! And Ferris really has it on the ropes here. Finally confusion wears off. No chance of taking itself down. It does rest back up. So that'll be two more turns that Ampharos gets. But they're essentially pot shots at it. Except now, right after the rest, it's switching out. 
seems to be a waste of turn on the rest. I guess if for some reason it thinks things are going so bad that it's time to switch Raikou back in. Dynamic Punch, that obviously it's nothing on Gengar. Psychic into the specialty down, that'll hit me. Good. Not 281 good, but good enough that the next one will finish it off, and Ferris Thunderbolt. Second Psychic. And Ferris drops! This is the 5th gym and we're now over 50 minutes! And Polyrap last out for Chuck! Critical Thunderbolt on Polyrap! Instant KO! Gengar's really been playing a sweeper here. Not once has it even fallen below half health. So here the fifth gym has taken over ten minutes, even though there's only two opponents here rather than three. Ryan would be a bit of a stumbling block for a challenger. Now hopefully Olivine Gym won't take ten minutes. If it does, we'll know. Definitely in trouble. Only one battle here. Ranatar leads off against Jasmine Steelix. Steelix strikes first with Earthquake. Good for 190, not quite half. Ranatar with its own Earthquake. Critical. Steelix just too tough. Too resilient to let you take it down even with one critical earthquake from the strongest attacker known to exist in this land. Second earthquake drops it off the quick claw so it doesn't have to fall into the red. Now Blastoise. Blastoise can hit. Will it take 213 off Tyranitar? Not gonna find out. Tyranitar's heading off to the bench. And of course it's Raikou coming back out. Blastoise will surf. How much will it take off Raikou? Probably... Just under a hundred. Raikou with a crunch! Huh. Now that's not gonna do much. Under 70, and that's exactly what Raikou wanted! Blastoise mirror coding that! So that... Letting it mirror cut the crunch instead of the Thunderbolt. Raikou might have too much problems taking down Blastoise at 328 with a Thunderbolt. 259, of course, it's much easier. Even rubs it in with a critical. But playing right into the mirror coat. May not look like it with over half health gone now. But it certainly beats taking back 600 or so. A Stantler. Thunderbolt here. It's a paralyze. And over half. 
And a dedicated terrorized cure berry, which doesn't really make much sense over a miracle berry. Maybe mint berry for sleep, since you can reliably inflict that condition on yourself, so to speak, with the rest. But paralyzed? In any case, Stamler just took down Raiko 153 with the earthquake. And now the partially damaged Tyranitar attempting to clean house on Stantler. Stantler will lead with the Earthquake. Down to 90. Second one will make Stantler the first Pokemon so far to get two KOs on the Challenger. So far, not even a team has had more than one. And we're into... Sixth gym, here comes Ancient Power with the Quick Claw that will put down Stantler. The Tyranitar does not fall. And after 56 minutes, six gyms down. So will have to wait, run up, get the sixth badge, then run along for the rest of the journey. Badge split 56-17. Last battle just under 5 minutes, so a bit of an improvement from the last. And now he's running across to the longest bridge in this castle. There are currently four members of the so-called Team Rocket former terrorist organization blocking the way. As you may know, Team Rocket officially, legally, disbanded eight years ago. The ensuing police investigation through several of their members got him convicted and sentenced to several years in prison. Now they're, of course, out of prison, and right afterwards, a few of their members decided to hold a news conference apologizing for what they've done. Those four continue. They represent Team Rocket here on this bridge today. They still use the Team Rocket name to represent their battling click. It's changed from their past activities, though. It'll be Suicune versus Cloyster. And Suicune coming back. Remember, this guy notorious for using Explosion. And Gengar, hoping to eat the Explosion, it doesn't, gets a Screech instead! 4-1 for Cloyster in the Out Prediction Department. Even though, even with a Screech, I'm not sure what Gengar gets fallen to. That's another story from our roving reporter just in. Our challenger remembers this opponent. Back in 2001, when the Team Rocket court cases were still tied up in the courts, this particular opponent and the challenger took place in the next part in an exhibition battle. Back then, he does have a Mewtwo, played a lot larger part on his team back then than it does now, not even in the six he's using today. Anyway, that Mewtwo in that battle took two explosions and was frozen on three separate occasions and still managed to get a solo sweep. This goes to show what Mewtwo can do. Now Pseudo Widow. With the earthquake after Suicune comes back out. Suicune. This is its first attack of the entire event, 58 plus minutes in. To serve as a put down Pseudo Widow. Yes. Now, Weezing. Silicon trying another surf. Don't think it can take down Weezing in one. It does get over half on it. Explosion, here comes the boom. Can Silicon take it? Oh, it certainly can't take a critical. Almost like taking 10 returns at once, 10 frustrations depending on it. The Suicune actually beaten by Explosion after it switched out on the first turn and attempt to preempt it. Now Cloyster coming back. 
third opponent from this. And Challenger sending in. Tyranitar, that'll take us up to the one hour mark. This being the 15th of 29 battles, this is the halfway point. More and more, it looks like this is gonna take two hours. Tyranitar going with Ancient Power. It's less than half on Cloyster! It retaliates with a Surf! And that also does less than half. Other comparable damages on each side. Now Tyranitar with a Crunch. Which completes the job despite being less type effective on Cloyster such as the stat distribution it's got. First member of the new and vastly improved, we'd say, Team Rocket goes down. Second Team Rocket member seems to have quite a weak team. I think after those years improving with their click, they would have stronger Pokémon than this. And it'll be Raikou versus Shuckle. Of course, no matter what you are, you're probably not going to hit Shuckle very hard. There's even a Thunderbolt from Raikou only gets 68. It does get a Paralyzed, which pays off right away. Shuckle loses a turn. Second Thunderbolt. Put it in position. To have a third one. Finish the job. Shuckle with Toxic. That will just wear right off as it runs into the Miracle Berry. Thunderbolt number three! And that does finish down Shuckle! Now another Azumarill. Michael has had trouble taking this one down in previous battles. Thunderbolt have enough now! No, it doesn't! 20! Now Azumaro with Parish Song! No anti-switch guards against that. Raikou certainly has two teammates that it can bail out to. Azumaro with Protect, that'll use up a turn. Eats up Raikou. Yep, Thunderbolt. That's gonna miss. Parish count down to two. Second protect. It works. So that'll leak the parish count down to one. We will be seeing some switches next turn. Which is essentially all Parish Song is good for when you don't have the anti-switch protections. Such as Whirlpool or Mean Look. Whirlpool, not really that effective since it wears off after just a few turns. Now Raikou switching. It's... It's dealt more, taken more... Got more KOs, been KO'd more times than anyone else. What?! Azumaro with Protect, that move makes no sense, doesn't deal any damage to Gengar, doesn't protect itself at all! Now, now go back to that last blurb. Raikou taking 1830 damage, that's about five times its health bar, and it's only being taken... It only has two times KO'd. So it has health management right there, knowing when to switch out. Now, Gengar with an easy KO on Shelter, it looks like. 
Only 217 to clear. That, that is an instant KO. So between Raikou and Gengar, there's two Pokemon combining for a no-damage clear. That Azumarill protect under no circumstances. I don't think that ever helps. Even though it's on 20, if they stay out, it's dead anyway. And if it attacked, it at least gets a chance to get in some damage against whatever switched in, but Protect didn't help it at all. Now it's on to the third Rocket member. It's Raikou. Against Vileplume. On paper, not really... Uh, very compelling match either way. Raiko with hidden power, though. Super effective. So, but from Raiko's health bar, you can tell right away that narrows it down to four possibilities what type that thing can be for. Dark, Ice, Steel, Bug. And because it got super effective, that narrows it down to Ice. Which is quite a nice choice for Raiko. The only three things that Thunderbolt doesn't really hit full damage on. Ground... Grass and the mirror match. And the first two of those hidden power takes care of nicely. Here, Vileplume using Pedal Dance. That with a critical hit. Which does deal some decent damage. First one didn't do very much. Miracle Berry, of course, to wear down the confusion, but it's not really that effective since Vileplume very low on health. Can't take another hidden power. And another Arbok! Thunderbolt! Not enough to clear Arbok. Enough to put it into the yellow. Now Earthquake's gotta clear 158! Can it do that? No! 8 still left! Raikou gets a chance to get off a second Thunderbolt. Take down Arbok! It's seen it rest, it still has the Miracle Berry up. So it can get into prime position to take on whatever comes out last for this Rocket member. Which is Kabutops. And there it has a Berserk G. Raikou not resting it's Satan, gambling Thunderbolt one chance, or else risks taking a hit from Kabutops it still could confuse, but... And that is the instant KO! Raikou with the sweep here. Barely hung on, but it got the job done. Now there's one more member of the Reformed Rockets. And then it'll be on past this long bridge into the next gym. They ran into our leading off against... The other Tyranitar! This could be nice. Let's see. Challenger's Tyranitar going first with Earthquake. Critical hit. Strong hits both ways potential. Oh! Got the instant KO! Against Tyranitar in the mirror match! Cleared 370! Not just the most effective instant KO Tyranitar has, that's... That's the strongest confirmed hit of the entire event so far! 
Obviously, Ed Weezing's explosion a few battles back. That only gets credit for 338. Statistically, we don't take overkill into account, so that 370 is the strongest confirmed so far. Octillery. Replacement. One of only three Pokémon capable of getting both physical attack and special attack over 300 points. The other two being Ho -Oh and Mewtwo. Puts it in pretty rarefied company. Tyranitar bailing out to Raikou in anticipation of a Surf, but gets a Swagger instead. That runs right into the Miracle Berry, which is... Good news so far. Thunderbolt! And that's a second instant KO! Could we be seeing another joint no damage clear? One more left! And it's Houndoom! Not really the most effective at taking hits. Can certainly give them. But probably not enough. Probably just too much for Raikou to take down before it found him gets any damage. Still in the green from that first Thunderbolt. I'm doing with a sunny day. Probably more like a sunny evening. It's 7.15 p.m. here in White City. Started just after 6. But... The effects of it are still felt throughout this across this bridge here in battle. Second Thunderbolt! Not enough! So Houndoom does get a chance to attack. Here's a Fire Blast! And very strong! Over 200! Not even needing a type advantage! Now the rocket's taken care of, just run across that bridge, and move on. You're 72 minutes in. And from that hot sun over the field, the next stop after running across this bridge is the frozen tundra of Mahogany Gym. And there you see it for the first time in this event. Here it is, Raikou versus Kadabra. Unevolved Kadabra. For some reason, hasn't found anyone to exchange back and forth with to get the Alakazam out of it. <coughs> In any case, Raikou with Crunch. Critical! And that is instant KO right on the first move of this gym. Sneasel comes in to replace it. Also not very well known for taking hits. Thunderbolt down to 111. So it's probably more well known for being able to give strong hits for strength. Only 66 in that Shadow Ball. That seems quite underwhelming from Sneasel. Finishing it off with a critical hit that doesn't matter. In many cases, the second critical hit in just three turns here at the Mahogany Gym. Finally up for Alvin, we have Seal. Even from 300, Michael can potentially take this down instant. And it does! That's a 
Four turn battle? That, that was the second fastest battle officially on record here at this event. The first fastest was the first battle, bear in mind for that one, Trayon was already in position at the starting line to start that one out. Here he had to run halfway across the bridge from the completion of the previous battle. So you take that into account, that last battle is very likely even faster than the first one with ten battles to go. Hopefully before Challenger gets... Mission accomplished! I go again versus Marowak. Not really so well as in the first one for it. Knows what Marowak is capable of hitting for. And obviously bailing out. In its place. Go Drio! Huh. Icy Wind! Very strange choice from a Marowak. Let's get a speed drop. So Drio here with an agility that it probably doesn't even need. Definitely doesn't even need at least now by ev ev by the fact that it actually got the jump with that move. Now Marowak with a rock slide. Is this enough? 257 to clear? Not even close! This Marowak is club. Doesn't really qualify as thick enough to give itself a bonus. Otherwise, it would have hit for a lot more than that. The drill with the drill pack. Anticipating another one. Gets a blizzard instead! What?! And it clears 145! Let's see that icy wind. Icy wind did 66. Extrapolate that to blizzard. Doesn't hit 144, did 145. That makes certainly a bunch of sense as far as damage, but... Nice to say that Dodrio was taken completely off guard by this highly unorthodox attack style with Marowak. And then comes Suik here to try and avenge it. And does with one surf, Marowak drops. And eradicate. Yes, sir. More than half. Hyper Fang. And unlike the Super Fang, which would have done 202 here, the so called Hyper Fang only gets 70. Just a clarification. Someone tried to call that Radical. It's Radico. O as in snow. Just clearing that up. Pronunciation is probably not as important as whether or not Radicate can fight. And here Suicune takes it down with the second surf, but just to clear it up for the record. Now Cedra. Suba configuring that a battle with Seedra would take quite a long time, bailing out back to Raikou! Now, Seedra would take its turn with Icy Wind! Used to be a popular move with Carol. And gets a speed drop on Raikou! And unlike Marowak, Seedra actually fast enough to take advantage of the speed drop, getting in a headbutt! Does it get a flinch? It gets 42. No flinch. It certainly needs a lot of 42s in a row with flinches to take down Raikou. And it won't. Qualifies as an instant KO. Now it's down to Price, the third opponent here in this gym. Coming up on 80 minutes.
This thing, that's 80 minutes, he's coming... He live 80 minutes straight, no commercial breaks! Because... We don't need him here! You really want commercials so much? Then stop watching for a while, insert your own! Go record... Go play back some tapes of old commercials you've recorded that you really want to watch for some reason! Otherwise, just be thankful we've been here for so long. The Ranage Hard leading off against Price Quagsire. Hypewise certainly favors Quagsire. Tyranitar hoping to at least get something in here's Crunch. Earthquake. Yeah, look at the two big workhorses of this team, Raikou and Tyranitar. What do they have in common, besides both being good? They're both weak to Earthquake, so that move is served quite a bit of good for whatever opponent can get them in. Second Crunch. Now Quagsire is switching from Earthquake to Surf. Flat through 225. No, doesn't even do as much damage as Earthquake did. I think you ponder the choice in the first place. And third crunch. Quagsire down. And the crew. Lady on Tyranitar certainly not going to take any chances there. We will come out. Dodrio. Hmm. Might expect Raikou to come out, but no, Dodrio is going to give it a shot. There's a Surf down to 203. We are using Endure. Do you think the time is right? Here's Ice Beam. Obviously can't KO Dodrio right here. Endure doesn't even kick in. It's still on 37. That's over 10% if Dodrio's planning on flailing. Not nearly as effective on 37 as it is on 1. Now Tentacruel probably anticipating flail switching out to something can probably take the hit better in Articuno. The drill with the second Endure. Which doesn't really work out for it. Well, after that, the second Endure counts as a miss. This third one guaranteed to work now. Articuno with an Ice Beam. That will put the drill on one. So now, drill in the position of having to clear 362 with a flail against Articuno. Can it do it? No! 319! Now Articuno finishing off Dodrio. I guess Dodrio's been... Ever since that... Dragonair KO... It's been completely outclassed. I guess... As it gets later on, the Pokémon have been more of a match, and it hasn't been able to keep up. Iko easily putting down the remaining damage on Articuno. And Tentacool coming back out. Tentacool. Iko using Crunch, probably in anticipation of Miracle. Tentacool well known for that to the point. Mewtwo with Psychic. Tentacool can survive that with over 100 HP remaining. Here it gets crunched with a special D down. Yes, there is Mirror Coat. Now with the special D down, Raikou shouldn't have a problem dealing the remaining 281. Here's an interesting proposition. With Mirror Coat, you use Hidden Power, that can always be countered. Never Mirror Coated no matter what type it is. Since we know Raikou's Hidden Power is for Ice, that would just take way too long, presumably. Raikou knows it can take one mirror-coated crunch. And then finished it off with the Thunderbolt after the special D-drop, so that's 
Logany Jim down price gives the glacier badge. Now we're in 25 minutes in. That's just one more gym to go. Blackthorn Jim. Gloria with what appears to be a highly unconventional team, not really sure what it's trying to do. Possibly even stranger than that Marowak. Two battles back. Of course, coming. Mahogany Jim takes place in a completely enclosed area. Ever since he's come out of that gym, you can see how much the sun has set in the few minutes he was there. Coming up on se It is 7.30 now. You have to wonder how much more daylight there will be for this event. Or if it's even needed. Because after Blackstone Gym, all that's left is the Elite 5. And yes, they do call themselves the Elite 4, but they're not really fooling anyone. Everyone knows that the battle stage at the top of the castle does have five tiered stages, rather than four. Nine Shields got in a fire spin again, a weak attack. Now, Becker trying to take it down with Thunderbolt, don't think it can get there, leaving 42. And Nine Shields Hypnosis. Remember, Raikou does get a freebie with the Miracle Berry. So it takes that sleep and recovers right away. Even after hypnosis hits, which is certainly not guaranteed to. Nine tails down. And Smeargle! But you can never really predict what it does, but there are only a few things it can effectively do without just being so weak that you don't really care what it does, you just take it down. Like a Thunderbolting Smeargle all the way into the red. That's how weak it is against guarding hits. But now it puts up a spore! And that'll send Raikou off to the bench. And there's Rio. Finishing off Sneakle with the Drill Tech. That's its first KO. It's recorded in over 45 minutes. Trying to play some catch up, I guess. After those disappointments in the last gym. Now Tangelo, which shouldn't be much of a problem for Dodrio at all. Remember with Raikou already asleep, Tangela can't attempt to put Dodrio to sleep. If it does, that's a disqualification. Using Bind, only nine. Even on Dodrio, which is certainly not known for its defensive prowess. Of course, it gets the extra 20 off combined damage. Now, Dodrio finishing off Tangela with a critical drill tech doesn't need to be critical. That's down now seven opponents to go in this challenge. Two hours is looking more and more. Like it'll be close to the final time. Could go either over or under. And Vince with his team full of second stage Pokemon. For some reason haven't gone up to the third stage.
Psycho comes out. Gets Croc and Otter introduced an hour and a half into the event. Now this is a serious mismatch. And indeed, Crocodile is coming back. And Bailey, which will presumably eat up a Thunderbolt. And does. And even though it's not very effective, still takes 76. That's around a quarter of its health. Now Raikou, hidden power. That'll be super effective. And critical hit! So drops Bailey just like that! Now Quilava. We have Bayleaf, Quilava, Crocodile. Nice theme team, but probably not nearly as effective as a battle team. And Thunderbolt, not even a type edge, hits for more than half, down to 121 on Quilava. Here's a mess. Like a second Thunderbolt. That drops Kulava, forces Vince to have to go back to Crocodile, which is about as dead as my voice, which is to say, not really dead, but soon to be gone away. And there we have it, Thunderbolt. Be an easy instant KO. Even into 316. Here's an interesting statistic. Since the last time we did a Blurred Ball Unevolved Pokemon, they have been out damaged 1971 to 76. That is a ratio of more than 25 to 1 against. So if the challenger gets closer and closer, probably more and more motivated. Unevolved Pokemon just fighting less and less of a challenge at all. This was a no damage clear for Raikou. Now it's on to Claire. Leading off its Tyranitar. Against Kingdra. Definite advantage Kingdra right here. And a Hydro Pump. Deciding to hit hard. And hitting hard it is taking Tyranitar into the yellow almost 250. Ancient power from Tyranitar trying to do at least something, maybe get a boost to allow it to survive. But it can't. And so Tyranitar running for the hill. In comes Suicune. Hmm. I think you can hit that with a Hydro Pump, won't hit nearly as hard. Let's get 55. Far Cry from 248, it got on Tyranitar. Now with a Dragon Breath. Get the Paralyze. What Dragon Breath can do. But in any case, Kingdra seems to have called it. Here comes a Mirror Coat. It puts Kingdra down to 103. Now with a return, can you trust the mirror coat that it won't do much? Won't even do anything. The surf won't do much either. Into a Kingdra? That's just even from this low health, it'll still take three more hits to put down Kingdra with a surf. Second return. Kingdra think it can race Suicune with Surf? Even 
paralyzed. Now it's resting. Going back to full health. And there's the mint berry. To recover from the self-imposed sleep. Get right back into the game. Now that got Kinger using Dragon Breath again. Suicune so called that. Kinger's down. Except got two for two on paralyzing with Dragon Breath. Does it have to hit through? It doesn't. It calls it with Mirror Coat. That puts down Kingdra! Nice job from Suicune here. Fighting with whatever weapons it has. That's the real tale of the tape with Mirror Coat. The Challenger not is damaging with it, but using it much better. The Challenger used to call Suicune's Dragon Breast to hit for a lot more than could with Surf. Well, it's the opponents both used it against Raikou, which anticipated it using a weaker attack rather than Thunderbolt, which would have been certain death, or at least KO. Gyarados could potentially use Thunderbolt or Thunder. Suikun doesn't want to risk that, sending in Raikou instead. Indeed, it uses Double Edge, which wouldn't do anything when Mira coded. It does hit Raikou for 121 and some recoil back. And Gyarados' turn to come back. Ampharos, remember the last time we saw Ampharos? Back in Flying Wood Gym against Chuck, he slowed Raikou down significantly. Is this one? Go crunching it now. This is it free range to do so, not confused. And will be confused. Ampharos seems content to fight with Thunderbolt, doesn't have dynamic punch. Or even fire punch. Another crunch. Got a race situation going here. But Raikou hitting for over 80. Ampharos. Not even 60. Raikou with the clear edge here. It's just a matter of time will it hit down Ampharos. After this, it just needs one good hit on Gyarados, and that's the 8th badge down. And it's on to the Elite 5. Sun definitely going down. Approaching 8 o'clock. Remember we can see it very clearly. Blackthorn Gym, a gym without walls. Whereas said, Raikou only needed one good hit on Gyarados. Drops it. Not quite the instant KO because it had that recoil damage earlier. Now, Raikou Thunderbolt, the defining move of this event so far. Almost 10,000 damage just from that move alone. And 30 KOs with it. Falling a bit behind schedule if Challenger is hoping to break two hours with just the Elite 5 left. 21 minutes before that milestone comes up. And certainly the Elite 5, no pushovers. First up, Will. And Tyranitar. Sent some psychics on this team. Because that's what Will was known for. But it won't be a psychic, it'll be Electabuzz. Which can learn cross chop, so Tyranitar is going to have to hurry up. If it doesn't want to get out raced. It gets the quick claw to work, leads with Earthquake. Does that have enough to clear 299? Yes! 
There's one down, 14 more to go here in top this open air stadium atop the castle. Five stages, each one higher than the last, and hopefully our challenger gets across that before losing too much light. Although they can see the end quite clearly from here, it doesn't really matter if the sun goes down. Don't reach the top of this without knowing where to go. That should use Giga Drain to gain no health back since it doesn't have anything left to heal. Now it gets one that will heal some. But not enough. Just took way too much damage, over 90% from that first crunch. Now Flareon seems to be a similar case to Electabuzz, except minus the ability to learn Cross Chop. Similar stat profile too. At least as far as Tyranitar is concerned. The earthquake. But this one falls short. Flareon survives at 15, gets off a fire blast though. That won't do very much. Tyranitar's still on 84. The second earthquake takes it down. Now Will's gone as the 25th opponent in this adventure that started just after 6 again. Now 7.45 to Ranatar with its fourth sweep. Now he's running up to the next stage to deal with Koga. He'll be Raikou against Koga. Type-wise, you might expect someone like... Maybe Tyranitar again, maybe Machamp. Possibly even Gengar, but... Going with Raikou, trying for sheer... Brute power more than anything with this Thunderbolt. Venomoth takes... Just over half. Going with Double Team. That for the first time since Goldenrod. Thunderbolt again, 25% chance, and hits right through it. This team has not aired once into the 25% chance. Hasn't aired into the 57% chance either for some reason. In between that, it's had some unlucky streaks, but oh well. Now in comes Magmar. It's that with a Thunderbolt. Again, just over half. And now Magmar with Toxic. That'll be a freebie since Raikou has the Miracle Berry still intact for this battle. So right in the sweet spot between 46-54%. Could go either way on the next hit. Could get a KO, could not. This time it does. I go again. Two hits to drop Venomoth, now two to drop Magmar. And final opponent for Koga is... Lapras. No trouble for Vyko. The question is, what does Lapras do itself? It hits Thunderbolt well over half. No question. Now Lapras with a Toxic. That will poison Raikou, which will not be freebied. 
recovers with leftovers, still not enough, Raikou still gets one turn before the poison actually starts working in. And that'll be enough. So Lapras goes down and Raikou comes up with a no damage clear, just four battles from the finish line! Quite a high level performance! Could be any number of starters for this team. And decides to send in my champ. Okay. And Bruno sends in another my champ. Just like the final rocket member. We have a mirror match to lead things off. Challenger's Machamp, Mama doesn't want the mirror match, it's leaving. And sending in Dodrio. For a chance to... Oh, Machamp with a fissure! Caught that one, timed it just right. Looks like these can exchange hard blows. Machamp. Now Bruno's Machamp coming out. The trio will now be up against Golem, which takes a drill tech, which brushes it right off. 44. That's the weakest attack. Challenger has done all event. Mm. Oh, no, we have that. Zuikun using Surf for 28 against Claire's Kingdra, so that. But in any case. The Drio not wanting to go against Golem sending in Machamp again. Golem with a rock slide. There's something. But not very much. 51. Machamp going for cross chop. Hits. But not enough. Golem now with Fissure. And hits! Nick from the Sinewood Gym was 0 for 5 with his corn drills and guillotines now. Bruno 1 for 2 with Fissure. And now Tyranitar is going to come in against Golem. Probably clean up house and... Bruno... None of his Pokemon have actually been KO'd yet, there. now there's one. The thing about Tyranitar, not only is it strong physical with the stats, it can also play Special Attacker and just run those types into you. Tyranitar so far, Tyranapun, demonstrating quite a bit of proficiency with both, and almost fairly evenly distributing between them. Machamp! Tyranitar probably doesn't want to fight Machamp, it doesn't. The drawing, it'll be the Drio coming out. Champ with a cross chop. Hits for more than half. Even though that's the least effective cross chop so far in this event by either team, cross chop still averaging 249 in attempt has not missed once yet. The drill bracing itself. And the catcher rock slide. It's time now. The drill with endure. So now it'll get one chance to flail Machamp. It's got to clear 352. Or else Machamp gets to go one on one with Tyranitar. Dang. Here comes. Yes! Got enough! 
So Drio gets rid of Machamp, so Tyranitar does not have to face it. And our challenger, much less danger of losing now in the 27th battle. That would have been a disaster to go almost 110 minutes. Well, sh now it's over 110 minutes. Now Ursa Ring challenging Dodrio to clear 366. If it fails here, Tyranitar versus Ursa Ring, that's probably a much more palatable matchup for Tyranitar. But Flail gets 366! So the Drio here against Bruno in the 27th battle, finally getting a chance to redeem itself. Just three Flail attempts they've combined for over a thousand. That is one strong attack when you finally give it a chance to set up properly. Now it's down to Karen and Lance. And nine minutes, ten seconds away from the two hour mark. And suffice to say, the sun is officially set here over White City at 7.55 p.m. Riker coming out once again. Take on Slowbro. To be heavily in its favor. And Slowbro with the Quick Claw. I would make it a fast bro. It should be Slowbro is slow, not Slowbro is fast. Get the Swagger. Runs into the freebie with the Miracle Berry. Ryko been heavily using that. Remember it gets redeemed after each battle. Here comes a Thunderbolt. Falls short of taking down Slowbro. But unless the Quick Claw works again, it doesn't. Ryko should have an easy... KO. You're on Slowbro. Now Karen sending in Umbreon. Thunderbolt from Ryko. Hitting for 103. Remember Umbreon quite resilient to that kind of thing. Here comes a Swagger and this time the Miracle Berry is not there. Ryko is going to have to risk plus 4 attack. Confusion? Or, yep, it's leaving the battlefield and sending in someone else. Who will it be? Machamp! Takes a screech. Not nearly as effective when Machamp isn't confused, but... Now it is, remember, Umbreon's similar stat profile to Golem. But Champ only hit Golem for 240. Gotta get 259 here with a cross chop. And does! Now Karen down to one Pokemon. But Champ still not confused, but with a minus two defense from that Screech, it'll be Murkrow. Going first with a mean look, which doesn't really make much sense to me right here. If they switch out, they're obviously going to want to take on Merkle with whatever they switch to, and they didn't anticipate the mean look. That's just a free turn from a champ here with a rock slide. And doesn't quite get all the way, leaves Merkle on 20. Now Merkle finally attacking with Drill Peck. Remember from that screech, this is essentially like two Drill Pecks. And the champ into the red! Taking 346 damage, but finishing it off with Rock Slide. I think Vital Throw makes more sense there. Well, with its guarantee, Rock Slide can actually miss, but... Doesn't matter now. Champ has defeated Karen. And now just one more step to climb. The final battle with Lance is up next. up the steps. Just over five minutes left. 
He's hoping to beat two hours. Once he gets up to the top, that big clock is playing the result time certainly visible. Serve his clear motivation if he thinks he can beat two hours. Maybe an opportunity to step it up. It'll be the challenger versus Lance. Rapidly approach the 8 o'clock hour here in White City. Leading off the final battle. Somewhat symbolic Raiko. Easily the most active participant of this team. Versus Tyranitar. Seeing Raiko and Tyranitar mix up for massive damage on the same team. Now they're opposite each other. Obviously not the same Tyranitar. Here's Raiko with a Thunderbolt. That'll need three hits. Tyranitar Earthquake. Four minutes to go before two hours. Hits for over half. That'll need two hits. So Raiko can probably give him one more before it goes... No! Tyranitar using the Quick Claw, but... With Rock Slide! That blows away the opportunity! That's not gonna be enough to get 153! Not enough to get anything! So Raiko getting a free Thunderbolt here, and gets a Paralyzed! Down to 100 on Tyranitar! What a turn of events in the last turn! I'm not talking about an ironic time to get the Quick Claw to work, Tyranitar gets nothing! Now Raiko finishes it off! So taking down Tyranitar in a one-on-one... -on -one. There are now two Pokémon left! That was Raiko's 40th KO, going for 41 now against... Kangas Khan. Three minutes to go! Thunderbolt! That'll need three hits! Kangas Khan... Hyper Beam! Not deal 153. It does! So Raiko goes down one last time. Two and a half minutes to go. And Tyranitar to replace it. The challenger's Tyranitar this time. So it go down on one side, now here it is on the other. Gets a free turn into the Hyper Beam Recharge. Gonna make the most of it with Ancient Power. Maybe get a boost, but doesn't get anything missed into Bright Powder! So it's like the Recharge turn isn't there at all. Two minutes left now. Kangas Khan with Submission! That'll hit hard. It's for over half quite a bit of recoil, but Kangas Khan gets one more of those in. Tyranitar can't take it down with this Ancient Power. And we certainly have a new all game challenger, not just in danger of missing two hours, but in danger of losing altogether. In this 29th battle, that would be an extreme disappointment. But here is Tyranitar with a clutch Quick Claw. Uh, yes, it hits with Ancient Power. Kangas Khan down. It certainly gets a key stroke of luck here. Now Lance down to one more Pokémon. Tyranitar under half health. And wouldn't it be fitting to end it like this? Tyranitar Dragonite atop the highest stage in the land, with the only lights coming from the stage, and just over one minute to go, Dragonite with Thunderbolt already has a huge head start in damage. And Thunderbolt gets only 68! Tyranitar Ice Beam, that'll catch up, but not take it down outright. Catch up to the head start, Dragonite down to 43! Now Dragonite, possibly learning from that Ice Beam, trying to Ice Beam Tyranitar itself, obviously they won't get anything near 322. Doesn't even get critical, that's not enough, so Tyranitar with one more Ice Beam! If it hits, this is over! It hits! Dragonite down, Lance defeated! So now... The challenger has completed all 29 battles, now all plus has got 18 seconds! Run up the stage! Get that, get that certificate of victory from Lance! Obviously running, trying to beat two hours, sees that clock! 
Seven seconds left! Four seconds! Three, two! Official time, 159.58.8! Done it, beaten two hours, the entire castle goes down! What an amazing accomplishment here. Two hours for 29 opponents. So if we ever see you again, we will.